Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. So now we're coming to our last presentation of the uh, session. So it's by uh, Jan Klausner. And uh, to also talk about uh, crack and signatures. That's an interesting topic. So uh, Jan has studied computer science with focus on cryptography and security at uh, Te Technical University of Dresden and worked in the IT security industry ever since. Several, several years developing security products have provided John with a deep understanding of the possibilities and challenges around smart cards in particular and public key infrastructure. Finally, he joined the team at DTrust in 2021 to improve and promote innovative ideas around PKI and post-quantum cryptography. So welcome John, take it away. Thank you also for the opportunity to speak here. Um, Right, so uh, I want to talk today uh, mainly about uh, um, why we need to act now on the uh, signature uh, problem. Uh, because um, many talk about uh, harvest and uh, decrypt later uh, is a problem for uh, when we talk about uh, the, the cryptographic relevant quantum computer. Um, but uh, they mostly ignore that uh, there are things that are also important. And um, this is AI does. So the AI does uh, um, environment um, uh, is basically a, a, a tool to, to digitalize uh, the society. Um, when we are, want to uh, move to the uh, digitalization of uh, government and so, uh, this is a building block of this. And what does the AI does say about uh, uh, digital signatures? In the end, they are uh, at the same level of a um, yeah traditional signature. Um, as I put here in the from the AI does regulation, um, so they have the same legal effect. And the AI does regulation does not talk about uh, retirement algorithms or or weak keys or something like this. Um, and also, there's no obligation for anyone using digital signatures to use something like archives or, or do regular timestamping. So basically, this is uh, up to the user. Um, but in the end, uh, this means a user of a digital signature uh, can expect that the digital signature is valid for 30 years or, or longer. Uh, so. It's legally binding. And we are looking at uh, Moscow's theorem, uh, which we had <laughs> in the last two days uh, also a lot uh, displayed. Uh, actually, we are already uh, too late when it comes to the qualified signatures. Um, in Germany, uh, there was um, uh, some time ago, uh, um, uh, and, and, and uh, work done uh, where they uh, put some uh, simulated uh, cases to the curve. So they, they, uh, they basically said, okay, does it work with uh, uh, digital signatures? What would uh, a judge decide if he is uh, 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 confronted with a, a certain case? So one of these cases was like, uh, okay, uh, there was a, a disability pension uh, 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 claim. Uh, which was uh, disputed at the court. And uh, uh, in this case, the electronic signature was done with a wiki. So back then, not talking about T2C, it was like, okay, we have a RSA 2024 key. Uh, and the, 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 the judge needed to, uh, to, to decide on this court case. And in the end, the outcome was, um, yeah, when the digital signature is not... Uh, uh, proven secure anymore, then you come into the case of a free consideration of evidence, then you need the judge decides on 
several other circumstances also offers an own knowledge about the topic if this uh, digital signature is still uh, um, uh, valid or not or if the contract that is signed is uh, uh, real or not. Um, so um, giving, giving this thing we uh, should start to move to PQC for the IDAS now. Um, yeah, the problem is no, uh, we have to remove and I think we also had a lot of talks about, so I will uh, skip this uh, over this very fast. Uh, we have uh, several um, um, yeah, uh, standards in place, uh, or uh, standards will become, uh, becomes, or drafts will become standards, and uh, the, the, the new uh, competition by the NIST. Um, so, uh, and I think I have the opinions of several others are also that we do not have a simple replacement here. So we do not know if uh, uh, all the new algorithms will be secure in the next uh, decades. Um, others who, who we have uh, lots of trust in have other problems like statefulness or uh, different size or to, to large sizes of signatures or keys, um, performance, and so on. Um, that uh, brings me to the next uh, topic. So uh, in the end, this what I call is uh, the quicksand of the PQC. What we will see in the future, uh, most probably are like also breaks of, of the, the, the new algorithms. We've seen this, for example, for Psyche or Rainbow, which were like really uh, being quite far in the NIST competition and uh, broken at the, very recently. Um, and there are many voices in the cryptographic community which uh, also foresee this kind of future, maybe for the, the, the lattice-based cryptography, like Dilithium or so. This is speculation, but, uh, you know, when we are talking about uh, 30 years of security, um, this could uh, quite happen. Uh, then there's the other things, uh, like we will see probably, most probably, improvements of uh, signature uh, schemes, like we did in the past, for example, for the RSA, uh, when it was moved from uh, the PSS 1.5 to PSS. Um, we will definitely see bugs. I mean, uh, even recently, for, for our traditional algorithms, in place for more than 20 years, uh, we've seen bugs and implementations that could quite uh, um, uh, break uh, whole, whole ecosystems. Um, we will see uh, more PQC signatures coming. Who knows how long this uh, new uh, competition of NIST uh, will last. I mean, the last, uh, since the current one, uh, which is still not finished, is going on for, uh, six years, um, um, and uh, who knows what the, when it is uh, arrived, the quantum computer, what we, we, we can do with this uh, stuff um, in order to, to break uh, uh, other algorithms. So uh, I think there are, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty here, which uh, results in being um, for for PKI uh, uh, that we will see probably, uh, yeah, that we need to uh, switch uh, algorithms or keys in a very short uh, uh, period of time. So. Uh, what I mean with short, I mean currently switching an algorithm uh, in a PKI takes like 10 years. I mean, uh, more or less, we've seen it before. And this is much too long. And uh, we may also uh, have the situation where we uh, have to cover security gaps. So uh, if uh, an algorithm or a key turns out to be really uh, broken uh, from uh, one day to the other, then we need some kind of mechanism in place uh, that we can uh, anyway operate our PKI uh, securely. 
and for, for at least uh, uh, for a couple of time until we can remove uh, this algorithm more key. And this is basically uh, what we call <laughs> agility. Um, but when you look, for example, at the AIDAS um, uh, ecosystem uh, with all these uh, uh, different uh, providers, trust service providers, um, uh, operators, customers, which are all uh, operating different uh, PKIs themselves, um, I think that is uh, quite a task to, 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 to make this ecosystem crypto agile. Um, the current approaches um, to deal with uh, um, um, uh, weakening uh, algorithms uh, are basically uh, including timestamping or, or resigning uh, documents that you have. I mean, my predecessor already talked about uh, the, the PADES, uh, which uh, also uh, has some means of uh, um, securing contracts or signatures for a longer period of time. But all this includes uh, regular timestamping. Um, there are also solutions like uh, uh, evidence records, uh, syntax uh, um, solutions uh, for, for archiving documents, um, which are basically uh, including uh, building hash trees and uh, timestamping them. Um, but time stamp costs. So, so Detrust itself uh, provides a time stamping serving for AI does, but it costs money. So you cannot really uh, <laughs> uh, expect a customer uh, or individual to, to, to pay for something that he gets usually now for free. This is uh, a handwritten signature. It's quite hard. So uh, if we do not find a solution to that it is uh, a bit more cheaper, then uh, our digital transformation will definitely not uh, uh, take place. Um, so our approach is basically to, to make uh, last uh, digital signatures last longer. Um, and this is why we propose uh, hybrid schemes. Um, I think the, the working is quite clear. When you combine two different uh, algorithms uh, and one gets broken, then you have uh, a, a means to close or to, to cover the security gap that you have. Uh, uh, and you uh, have a time window to, to uh, retire the, the old algorithm or the key uh, to replace a new one. Um, you can do this with the traditional and post-quantum algorithms, or you can also do this, of course, with two post-quantum algorithms, <laughs> um, which I maybe uh, talk about uh, uh, later a bit why this is also needed. Um, there are different type of screens, uh, and I will go through uh, uh, a couple of them uh, in the following slides and to try to um, 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 yeah, uh, explain a bit what are the, the pros and cons uh, and how, how does it work. Uh, one of the uh, first one, which is quite simple one, is uh, this, uh, uh, what is called related certificates. Uh, it is uh, currently um, becoming a standard at the IETF. Um, and this is really simple. Uh, uh, you have a certificate, and uh, in an uh, extension of this certificate, you can uh, have a cryptographic secure uh, link uh, to another certificate. So you, two certificates are bind to one, um, one, one entity. And um, yeah, so, so you have uh, a binding of some sort to the same entity. Um, in the end, uh, you can uh, use any algorithm here you want. Um, the extension is, uh, I think, non-critical, so uh, you, you have also a kind of backwards compatibility um, uh, to systems who, who do not know this kind of extensions. They just ignore it. Um, when it comes to a kind of a protocol independency, that means uh, uh, 
does other applications uh, who use this kind of construct need to be uh, adopted to this? Then, uh, uh, yes, so you have no independency. Every application who wants to use this needs to be uh, changed in order to uh, like uh, apply this linking. So, um, and uh, when it comes to the security implication, then here is the problem that uh, you do not have any uh, uh, means how to use these two keys in the end. Because uh, well, uh, you have a linking, but what you do with this linking is up to the application. Maybe a, 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 a advantage, but uh, in most cases I think we want a really a an, an, an security um, um, that we uh, really need to use both keys to, to design something. Um, the next stuff, I think I don't need to explain so much because as far as my predecessor <laughs> talking about is a, a Catalyst extension. Um, yeah. Um, here uh, you have, uh, can only have uh, one extension for an algorithm. Um, uh, as you also explained, uh, it's quite hard to, to, to extend uh, all the applications in order to use this uh, kind of uh, um, um, extension for, for both keys. Um, for the security application, I think there are two ways to implement this extension. One is, is the critical, uh, I think that was you using, because the critical extension means you have to use this uh, key in order to, to process the certificate. Non-critical means uh, uh, if you do not understand this uh, extension, then you can ignore it, which, but in the end means for digital uh, signatures, uh, yeah, what does it mean? So, uh, so you, you have no, <laughs> uh, shall I use both? Uh, if I didn't use both, is this signature still valid? So this is quite complicated in the AIDAS uh, environment to, to use this. Uh, so the advantage of the non-critical extension, then you gain backwards compatibility with, uh, with uh, clients that do not understand this. They can still process this. So, which is not so for uh, security extensions. They will uh, um, um, uh, invalidate the whole certificate if they do not understand this. Um, another um, variant of the, the hybrid certificates uh, are called chameleon certificates, which are also in the IETF currently um, um, proposed. So there's, they are not yet uh, being officially uh, becoming a standard. This is just an uh, idea, but I think there are uh, many uh, um, yeah, important names who support it. So that's why I'm mentioning this here. And um, trust is one of them. Um, and uh, uh, basically, this uh, mechanism is some going like this. So you, you have also extensions in the certificate as uh, with a uh, catalyst solution. Uh, but with these extensions, um, you can rebuild another certificate which contains the second key and a second signature. So, um, uh, uh, in an end application, uh, you can basically present two uh, certificates uh, uh, that are um, um, like look like a traditional certificate. So, um, in this case, uh, you, you, you gain the advantage that uh, some end applications uh, uh, don't need to be uh, uh, extended so much, but in, uh, in the end you need some kind of uh, um, a s service that uh, can reconstruct this uh, second Delta certificate. Um, in the end, uh, um, this means you, you are somewhat protocol independent, um, but you still need uh, two PKIs that are in parallel that need to be handled. In the end, you have a uh, PKI for the base certificate and for the uh, Delta certificate also, which needs to be in place. Um, 
also since this is a critical extensions you you have not the advantage of uh, an an uh, uh, backwards comp compatibility uh, so let's come to the um, composite signatures um, uh, this is basically um, not an uh, uh, extension or an, 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 an solution that uh, is uh, um, specific to certificates, but it's uh, more like an algorithm. So that is uh, enclosing other algorithms. Uh, you have component algorithms. Um, in this case, for the composite signatures, these are uh, two. Um, uh, and uh, when you want to uh, make a signature, then you ha also have to use both of them to, to create them. So it's like an, yeah, an array of signatures. You have an array of keys, create an array of signatures of the same type. And uh, the, the, the validation uh, algorithm uh, needs to verify both signatures in order to be uh, uh, okay. So if one of the signatures is not okay, then the validation uh, shall fail. Um, as for the uh, algorithm selections, uh, you, you currently you have uh, uh, only a pair of algorithms that you can define, and uh, they are explicitly set. That means uh, at the IETF uh, in, the, in the draft standard that is uh, there, um, there are certain presets of uh, algorithm combinations uh, proposed. Um, you can extend this uh, uh, um, uh, algorithm sets by, by yourself if you want to, but uh, in the end you need then to propose a new standard for, in order to do this. The big advantage of this composite signatures is that they are transparent to other protocols. So uh, if you want to use them, for example, in the, 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 the PADAS uh, environment or in the AIDAS, uh, it looks like uh, one signature, which is maybe bigger, but in the end it's the same. So, so the big advantage, I think, in these composite signatures is that you only need to uh, adapt the, um, the crypto library in order to implement things in the whole uh, ecosystem. Um, and the last... Uh, uh, um, that I want to present your last composite or the last hybrid scheme are uh, the K of N signatures, which is a, a more uh, sophisticated uh, uh, option of these uh, composite signatures. Uh, basically here, uh, we are not limited to uh, only two algorithms. You can have uh, three or more, and uh, you can uh, um, uh, provide a parameter that uh, uh, can say, okay, from these uh, uh, signatures, uh, from these algorithms, um, you need to uh, verify a subset in order for the whole signature to be uh, valid. Um, and uh, also we, we are not specifying here uh, um, a certain sets of uh, algorithms. So uh, this is a generic construction possible where you can use all algorithms that are currently uh, specified or standardized and uh, uh, generate them in this, uh, uh, in this scheme. Um, as uh, with the uh, composite signatures, they are transparent to protocols. So again, uh, you only need uh, uh, an crypto library. We need to use a crypto library that understands this kind of algorithms, and you are free to use them. It has all the, uh, the uh, security advantages uh, from this uh, um, scheme. Um, and uh, with this uh, K of N approach, you also gain something uh, uh, forward compatibility. That means. Uh, if somebody um, uh, does not know one of these uh, three algorithms, for example, then you can simply ignore it because uh, it's a parameter k is two, then you only need to verify the two that he knows. Okay. Um, 
in the end, this is uh, our overview um, uh, of these this hybrid schemes uh, that we have here. And um, the, the, the point of detrust is, is that uh, in order to, to, to be able to, to move uh, forward to the P2C and to be crypto agile, uh, uh, the best would be uh, that we can use at least uh, either the composites or uh, more, uh, even uh, better, the, the care of N signatures uh, in the AIDA environment. Um, because this is one of uh, the building blocks um, to move to an agile PKI, we call it. And uh, an agile PKI, uh, as we envision this, um, this um, shall have uh, automated and flexible processes um, to switch keys and algorithms without interrupting the security and the operation of a PKI. Um, one building block, as you said, are hybrid algorithms. Um, another building block, uh, block is, of course, crypto agility of components. So in the end, we need uh, for our PKI to operate, we need HSMs that uh, we can update with our components. And the other uh, building block is the so-called root key update. Um, okay, I think this uh, I already played for agility for, for components. Um, uh, the root key update, which is uh, already standardized at the ITF, um, is a way to cost certificate uh, two uh, uh, root certificates. And so in the end, um, one entity that is uh, living in the old root, one client living still in the old root, and does not know about the new root, can trust certificates from the new root. Um, because um, you have an, an trust anchor with a cost certification of the two root certificates that they can, uh, um, that the trust pass goes from the, the, uh, the new entity certificate to the cost certificate root of the new PKI to the old root certificate. Um, the advantage is uh, that you do not need to update an old client in order to trust the new root and uh, if this uh, uh, certificate is presented and you can download uh, for this um, um, new root certificate, you can also automatically install it. Okay, so now at the end, um, some key takeaway points from this uh, presentation. Um, so today's digital signatures have a legal effect beyond the P2C, um, uh, beyond the, 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 the crack uh, uh, computer. Um, don't we have, don't see that there will be a drop-in replacement of the traditional al algorithms, sorry. <laughs> um, and that's why we need some kind of HIPKI PKI that deals with all the, the, the uncertainties that are coming in the P2C age. Uh, and for this, we need one hybrid algorithms. We need this uh, crypto agile system components, and uh, we need uh, to support this root key update. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jan. So I think we have time for uh, one question. It's the last session. So okay, yeah. Uh, thanks again for your, for your presentation. Um, my question is, uh, do you foresee that maybe, so you, you are uh, outlining a number of different options, and might be, the, be that certain options are better suitable for some PKIs and some applications and some other for others, or do you think there's gonna be, say, one winner and then more <laughs> or less everybody will, will follow suit? Um, you refer specific, uh, specifically to uh, oh, this? Yeah, yeah, um, okay. Uh, uh, may well be, I mean, um, I heard the talk from 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 Bas Westerbahn, and it was like, um, it seems like <laughs> that we may move to different directions uh, when we look at AIDAS or the, the, the German uh, VPKI. 
uh, and uh, for the web PKI because uh, I see there are, there are much different uh, um, requirements there uh, for these worlds so that we may have different uh, solutions for, 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 for these use cases. And we need to make sure that, that, that our solution that we, we, we deal with uh, is, is most fitting for, for us. And that is why uh, we are uh, uh, going for these uh, hybrid schemes a lot, which may be not the best for the web PKI, for example. Or what uh, uh, um, um, environment or usage use case do you have in mind? Great, thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you again, John. Thank you. And with that, we have uh, wrapped up the afternoon session. So now there's a break and then back into the blue hall for a wrap up with Paul and Albert. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.